How are you doing? All right, so for this lesson, you need three cards. So grab three blank cards. Um, there should be some more on my desk if you need them. And then you need the yellow Supreme Court case um, sheet of paper. So have that ready as well. All right, first with the cards, we need to do a little bit of work prior to we get to the Supreme Court case for this uh, congressional um, unit topic. And uh, the first thing here, 2.33, is reapportionment. Sometimes also just called apportionment. So either one, same sort of thing to apportion or to reapportion, um, either way. And uh, so go ahead and, and write that down at any time if you need to. Just pause the video and then wait to go uh, to the next part once you've written. Okay, here we go. I'm flipping over. All right, one, uh, reapportionment is something that occurs every 10 years after a census. Again, reapportionment is something that has to happen every 10 years but after a census. Um, you might want to make a little arrow off of census. Make a little arrow off for census and remind yourself that a census happens after every year or during every year that ends in a zero. So 2020, 2010, 2000, 1990, 1980, 1970. This is mandated by the Constitution. So reapportionment happens every 10 years after a census on a year that ends in zero. So basically, we recount the country. We literally count every single person in the country. That's a census. After this information is done and we got a sense of like where people have moved, where people population has grown, then this is what happens. Congressional districts are redistributed among the states in the House. So it's only among House. All right, we don't have to reapportion the Senate because the Senate only has two per state, it doesn't matter. So they redistribute among the states in the House based on population changes. So congressional districts are redistributed among the states. House seats, basically house seats are redistributed based on population state changes. Congressional districts redistribute among the states in the House, House of Representative seats, based on population changes. If you need to pause it, pause it. As you see in this map here, this is the uh, predicted based on uh, what the Census Bureau thinks is going to happen. Now, we don't know, by the way fully because we haven't actually sat down and counted every single person, which will happen this year. Census will be sending letters to your house this year. If you don't answer that, they'll actually send someone to the house. So they're counting people, every single head. Um, and so you can see that the green is the, are the states that are gonna gain seats. So notice that a lot of them are in the South, North Carolina, Florida, Texas, a big one, Texas, or in the West, Montana, uh, uh, Arizona, uh, class, uh, Colorado, Alaska, and Oregon. And you, and you can see here that um, the seats that are being gained are more Republican areas, and the seats that are losing, the pink ones, tend to be in more Democrat areas. In fact, the state that's going to gain the most is Texas, and you can see on the map that it's dark green. That's going to gain three congressional seats. They're going to have three more seats. And the seat that is like bright pink is New York, which is very Democrat's place, and it's going to lose two. So overall, reapportionment is probably going to help Republicans. It depends on how the seats get redrawn, but generally it's going from liberal states to more conservative states. Um, Colorado's a very purple state. It's very mixed. Uh, Oregon is definitely a liberal state, but of the nine states or the one, two, three, four, five, six, seven states that are gaining, five are clearly more Republican. So anyway, that's an interesting thing. And of the states losing, I mean, Alabama is obviously conservative, but the other states tend to lean more liberal, except for Alabama and West Virginia. So, so that'll affect co Congress seats. It'll affect the Electoral College. This is called, again, reapportionment. Lastly, um, this leads to redistricting. All right, so once a state gains seats or loses seats or just has population shift because of the census, they must redistrict they must redraw the lines of every single house district for the federal level, and they have to redraw the lines for every single state legislature district, which would include both Senate seats at a state level and delegate seats at a state level or representatives uh, at a state level. So you have to redraw all those boundaries. All right, so that's reapportionment. So reapportionment, just shifting the number of house seats each state has based on population after a census. Okay, next card, redistricting redistricting and obviously a district is where a house of representative person runs and wins a seat and when they redistrict it means redrawing the lines of that district 2.34 flip to the back pause if you need to redrawing or adjusting electoral districts in the united states after a census and reapportionment 
So redistricting is the, the process of redrawing or adjusting electoral districts in the US after a census and reapportionment. Okay, second part, this is really important. You have to make the district approximately equal in population. So for example, Salem has 25,000 people. Roanoke City has 100,000. You cannot have Salem get one representative in the state legislature and Roanoke only get one. You can't do that. The districts have to be approximately equal in population to be fair. So that way each person's vote is essentially the same. Okay, so that's kind of the process here that, that the states have to go through. And, and by the way, this is really, 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 really critical. The redistricting is done by state legislatures. The redistricting, the redrawing of these lines, these boundaries is done by the state legislature, state legislature. The reapportionment part is done by the federal government, okay, because the Census Bureau is going to go and you know, count everybody. But the redistricting of, this, of these lines is redrawn by state legislature. So if the Democrats control the legislature in Virginia, they're going to get to redraw the lines and they may redraw the lines to benefit themselves. And if the Republicans control the state, then they get to redraw the boundaries and they may redraw the lines to help themselves. By the way, that is called gerrymandering. And we'll talk about that in another lesson. All right. So that's redistricting. If you need to pause, go ahead and pause. Last thing that's that's current and relevant for this lesson that we're going to do in a second on the Supreme Court is 2.35 jurisdiction. Jurisdiction is a really simple idea, and it has to do with courts. Jurisdiction. Notice that at the beginning of the word is jury, so you can kind of think like, oh, jurisdiction has to do with courts because courts have juries. All right, jurisdiction, by the way, jurisdiction doesn't have to do with a jury in particular, but just to remind you that it's about courts. Jurisdiction means that a court, it's a power of a court to make a decision on a particular case. Jurisdiction is the power of a court to make a decision on a particular case. For example, if you get a speeding ticket in Salem, you will go to traffic court. You do not go to the Supreme Court. The Supreme Court does not have jurisdiction on your traffic, um, your traffic ticket. Similarly, if you commit a crime in Salem, you will go to criminal court in Salem, you do not go to traffic court. All right, so if you get caught shoplifting, you don't go to traffic court for that. It doesn't have jurisdiction. Traffic court does not have jurisdiction over um, criminal law. Um, it, it only deals with traffic violations. So jurisdiction means whether a court has the right to see a case. So the Supreme Court, it has jurisdiction on all cases involving the Constitution. So that's like, you know, or, or, or conflicts between the states. Anything that has to do with the Constitution, Supreme Court is jurisdiction, um, ultimate, ultimate jurisdiction. All right, so that's jurisdiction. That's important because the case, court case that we're going to look at has to do with that. All right, good. Grab your yellow sheet about the Supreme Court, and I'm going to run through um, a case. So first off, there's a Supreme Court case we're going to talk about. It's Unit 2. Fill out Unit 2 in that part. The case is called Baker versus Carr. The case started in 1961. The issue is redistricting. Now you know why we did redistricting, don't you? All right, um, by the way, Baker, just to review, Baker is named first because Baker is the person suing and Carr is the person who's the defense. And by the way, Carr represents, this person Carr represents the state of Tennessee. Um, Carr happened to be the attorney general of the state of Tennessee, meaning like the chief law lawyer of the state. Okay, that's Carr. Baker is a citizen of the state of Tennessee and Baker, he is going to be suing the state over redistricting. So that's the case, all right? So this has to do with Congress and legislature seats. All right, cool, that's the issue. Next, go to the next box. Clause and amendment. The amendment that's being sued about is the equal protection clause of the 14th Amendment. Remember the 14th Amendment, amendment limited the power of states. It's really critical because this case has to do with the federal government getting involved in redistricting of legislature boundaries, legislative seat boundaries. So do they have the right to do that? And the Equal Protection Clause of the 14th Amendment is going to be critical on whether the Supreme Court can deal with that. All right, cool, facts of the case. Here we go. At any time, pause so you can write things down. And I 
kind of encourage you to do that so that way you can listen to my explanation. So first off, facts. Tennessee had a 1901 law that mandated reapportionment of legislative seats based on population changes. So as population shifts, um, a census comes out, and after every census, Tennessee is supposed to redraw their boundaries of legislative seats in their state. So Tennessee passes this law. They completely ignore it. Like literally they don't change the boundaries. So um, this is a problem. A citizen, um, they, but let me tell you why this was a problem is because people kept moving to cities during this time. This is a time of industrialization. So people are moving from rural areas. They're moving to Memphis. They're moving from rural areas. They're moving to Nashville. And people did huge shifts in population. In fact, Tennessee's population grew from 500,000 in 1900 all the way to 2.5 million by 1960. Yet they never redrew boundaries. Ten, you know, you have places with hundreds of thousands of people living them in Memphis, and they still have the na same number of legislative um, representatives than they did in 1900. And so this is huge imbalance. Um, in fact, check this out. One third of the population of Tennessee is electing two thirds of the seats in the state House of Representatives. I'll say it again, write it down. One third of the population of Tennessee is electing two thirds of the seats in the state house. So it's wildly um, disproportional. So like basically a bunch of rural people are getting to elect most of the seats in the state legislature and all the people that moved into the cities, like they don't have as much representation um, and it's and it's wildly unpopular. As a matter of fact, in some cases, there were like rural counties of Tennessee with like ten thousand people, and they got to have a representative. And then you had like Memphis with like half a million people, and they got one representative. Completely unfair. So here's what happened in 1961: a citizen named Baker sues that it's a violation of law to ignore the population changes. Basically, Tennessee for 60 years has ignored its law mandating reapportionment or apportionment and therefore it's a violation of law he will lose at the state level the state will basically down a pound sand so he sue he uh, appeals to the federal court eventually the case ends up in the supreme court so baker a citizen of tennessee sues that it's a violation of law to ignore population change that is totally unfair that like memphis has the same representation as some, you know, backwater rural area of Tennessee. Okay, if you need to pause, pause. The key question, and this, this is big, did the Supreme Court have jurisdiction over the questions of legislative apportionment? So can the Supreme Court even rule in this case? Does it have the power, jurisdiction, is it the power to actually force Tennessee to redraw boundaries? And this is huge because the Supreme Court had never really dealt with this issue before. It had always just been a state thing. And, and now do they have the questions? Can they, can they do this? The only reason the Supreme Court could even possibly say it does is due to the 14th Amendment and whether or not not redrawing boundaries hurts minority people who are moving into these cities and they don't have representation. And the rural areas, which are more white, has more representation. So that's going to be why the 14th Amendment is used. Remember, 14th Amendment is supposed to protect um, minority rights, black rights, after they were freed from slavery. And so now all of a sudden, this redrawing of districts is harming minority representation in, in urban areas and, and, and uh, benefiting the white people who live in rural areas in Tennessee. So that's why this question comes up, because it may seem weird, like, why is this the 14th Amendment? That's why. Okay. Pause if you need to. Um, the vote, 6-2 for Baker. There's one Supreme Court justice who didn't vote in this case. So 6-2 for Baker. Baker wins. And that means that, yes, under the ruling, please go skip down to ruling. Skip down to the ruling. Yes, SCOTUS, Supreme Court of the United States, can force states to correct apportionment and balance. So, yes, the 14th Amendment applies here. And therefore, the Supreme Court can force a state to redistrict, redraw boundaries, reapportion where legislative seats between cities and rural areas. Um, they must address this imbalance after a census. Why is this important? What's going to be the precedent? What's going to be the future of this? Well, the future is that this will lead to future cases by the Supreme Court in the coming years after 1961 and 62 of what's called one man, one vote. One man, one vote. So like if 
each person in the state basically has to get like equal amount of representation. You can't have Roanoke with 100,000 people. And by the way, mostly minority people having the same representation of a um, small city like Salem, which has a mixed population, although majority white population. But like, so it it's not fair for one person in Roanoke to have a lot less representation essentially than people in Salem. So that you can't do that. So the state must reapportion after each census. And then that means redistricting, which means redrawing the boundaries. All right, so um, this forces all states after the census, 2020 is our census year. So 2021, all states in the country will be redrawing boundaries and reshifting the apportionment of legislative seats and Senate seats at the state level and um, federal district um, representative seats um, at the federal level. So they're gonna be redrawing all three things. They redraw the federal house seats, they redraw state house seats, they redraw state Senate seats. Every state will redo that because of Baker v. Carr. There was a dissent. And the dissent only had two people, um, but they said that that's a political question and it's not a legal question. Their argument was this is totally political, like this is up to the state legislatures. It's not a federal issue. And they, they claimed that this was a judicial power grab. Like this is the Supreme Court grabbing power and making itself the arbiter of an issue that it totally has nothing to get involved in. Like total crap. That's what they said. Um, and they said clearly um, that this is a violation of separation of powers. This is the federal government getting involved in something that's completely the state government um, and that this is not right. Of course, the majority, the 6-2 that won, they say this is an issue at the federal level because of the 14th Amendment and the Equal Protection Clause. So there you go. That's Baker versus Carr. I want you to study this. And then I want you to do the millionaire um, that's on this. There's a millionaire, by the way, on some other vocabulary as well. So do the millionaire on the vocabulary and do the millionaire on this um, Supreme Court case. Make sure you win it and then post it up to um, this lesson. Post it up on Google Classroom. Thank you.